Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Today's Friday, April 22nd. Uh, this is your weekly take on the market. I will be your host. My name is Scott St. Clair. I'm the manager of the premium product group here at Investors Business Daily. Take a moment to read the disclaimer. Uh, I'm not licensed. Nobody at IBD is licensed. We don't give buy, sell, hold recommendations. We provide research, education, hopefully teach you guys to fish on your own. Okay, so the usual suspects, markets, industry groups, uh, stocks to watch, and um, quote of the week. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Let's pull up the markets. And you should see a chart of the uh, NASDAQ composite. It's about four o'clock my time, so this is up to date. Um, lousy day, market pushing near the lows. Uh, relative strength, very poor. And it, it just looks like one way or the other, we're testing these lows or, you know, going to break through them either way. And then who knows if we're headed for another leg down. But this has turned out to be a bear market rally. You know, in hindsight, we probably all thought there was a chance that was the case. You never know for certain. There hasn't been a whole lot to buy. So, you know, hope, hopefully not a lot of people got hurt. And, you know, the growth area just just has not been working. You know, it's it's yeah, I feel like a broken record on this uh, this video sometimes uh, week by week. Uh, the S and P and actually I didn't realize broke out of a double bottom, and the reason I know is because of the SPY, the ETF that tracks. Honestly, I can't. I don't even think I realized when that happened, but it looks like a failed breakout now for sure. Um, just not acting well. Now, relative strength wise, you can see it's much better than the NASDAQ. It's not pushing the lows like the, uh, the NASDAQ is. Um, but that's, you know, that gives me very little comfort. You know, we're, we're in most people I know, and I am definitely an absolute return investor, uh, versus a relative return, like a mutual fund is relative, right? If the S&P goes down 20% and they go down 17, uh, they did their job, right? They provided uh, 3% alpha. Uh, no, that's not really how, you know, most of us look at it. You know, if the S&P goes down 17, uh, I, I, I should, you know, if I'm doing my job, maybe go down three, maybe go down seven. Maybe this year when other areas of the market are doing well, I, I can go up three or seven, you know, which is, which is the case. I definitely am up on the year. I don't think it's a whole lot. It, it, it's not, it's probably very, you know, double digits, low, 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 but um, you know, there has been, have been things to buy. Now, when I get into the stocks, it looks like those have been things to buy of that game looks at least over short term. So uh, the, the weight of the market is starting to get too heavy for everything. So the things that we're holding up are, are really starting to feel the pressure uh, from the market. Uh, let's pull up the uh, IWM, which is the, the Russell. And it's hard to see, but that close was 191.52. Uh, this close was 193. This close was 191.88. So it's very, you know, it's pretty close to the worst close in this whole time period, the worst close, okay? How we have probed lower a couple of times, one, two, um, you know, sort of, but in, you can see after hours, the market closed right in the lows and then after hours, it just went even lower, which is so strange to me. <laughs> you know, if you, if you have stock this for sale at 12.35 my time um, and you know the market's going to close in 25 minutes, why do you wait till... 135 to do your selling. Partly, I think it's because they they can't do their selling, which is if you notice today, like if, if with the market today, uh, it's just like every bar, it's every bar, every bar is lower. This is a 60 minute bar for the last, you know, just like lower, low, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low, one little relief rally, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low, you know, and it's just, just, there's just no bids for stocks. And there's, there's people that want out. There might be some people that are being forced out, some forced selling, which is the worst kind of selling because you, you, you just take any price. The margin clerks will just take whatever they can get. 
And um, it just kind of feels like that, like that right now, the market, that, that there's somebody that needs out that's big. And, um, you know, some, the market, they sniff this out, the big money sniffs it out and they just, they just pull their bids. They just go away and they'll wait for that, uh, for, you know, for the maximum pain point uh, to catch those. I don't know if that's the case. We'll only know in hindsight, well, cause we'll read about it in the paper three, six weeks, nine months, nine weeks from now, whatever it might be. If, it, if something like that is going on. So I'm just not a fan of the market, obviously I, I didn't check, but I'm going to guess that IBD went to, um, market and correction. I'd be fairly certain that they did. Uh, I don't think they have to wait for these lows to do that. And I think most of you know that I've, I've felt like this is, the market's been in correction um, for a while. We've been in a bear market, you know, for a long time. Uh, the bear market, if we go to ARC, started here. Now, you know, that's February of last year. If you use some other stuff, like really most people were kind of dating the, the bear market in November of last year. So, you know, Fidelity Contra, November 19th. Uh, so it depends on, on, you know, how you want to date it. But if you're going to be conservative, let's go ahead and date it from November. So you've got, you've got uh, what, six months roughly. So we've been in a six month bear market. But the, it, the duration is, is good. It's getting longer. Uh, the percentage wise is, is um, not nearly anything bear market-ish. The s and is down 11% off the highs. The Q's 20%. I know that's kind of the standard. The IWM 21%. So it's, you know, it's, it's out there. Uh, all right, let's jump to the industry groups. And Cam Agriculture is number one, CF, Mosaic, et cetera. Oil and gas royalty is two. Energy Coal is three. Oil and Gas International is four. Media Periodicals, talked about that. There's only one stock, or I'm sorry, three stocks. Steel Producers, uh, pretty good. There's been some good stocks there. Steel Dynamics, maybe we'll show that one in the next segment. But it's the same the same groups, you know, littered with oil and gas and energy and uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Something very super broad, you know, as far as which groups are leading. Uh, but a lot of those stocks got hit this week. Uh, well, you know, FCX, uh, even the gold miners, which, you know, they, they, they had a lousy week, uh, Alcoa. Uh, so we'll pull up some of those. And, and so it, it, it just looks like maybe there's just no place to hide. The only, the only group I can think that's holding up really well is utility. So utility gas is currently 21. Uh, utility diversified is 25. But there's, you know, as you can imagine, there's no growth in utility. You can get a little bit of yield and maybe hide if you have to be invested. Uh, but there's very few places to hide after uh, this week. It was really, really uh, just a lousy week. What was the NASDAQ? The Qs were down only 3.85% for the week. It sure felt worse. Let's see, ARC was down 11% um, for the week. That seems more unlikely with, with what's been going on. So let's talk about um, some stocks like Shop. Wow, Shopify was down. 20% uh, this week, no bid, taking out the lows, 73% off the highs. Um, what was another one that I was uh, looking at that that really just kind of lost its way? Oh my gosh, I was trying to think of something that, that really, um, I think NVIDIA, something, yeah, undercutting the lows, down 8% for the week. 43% off the highs. Wow, I never even, just didn't even realize that. NVIDIA is almost in half. I think AMD is in half, 46%. New lows. So it's it's pretty nasty. And semiconductors were one of the best groups. And there's nothing in this group that's holding up anymore. ASML, ACLS, which was one that I was in, what, five, six weeks in a row down. Uh, AOSL. 
What's that look like? Very similar. And then last but not least, GFS, very similar. So it's it's um, it's pretty ugly out there. So this week, you know, if you were in mining and, and metals and industrials, uh, FCX, Freeport McMoran gave it up on earnings, which were really good. It's not the earnings, it's the reaction to them. So this looks broken, at least short term. This could turn out to be a base, but it's literally gone from you know 52 week highs to the 40 week in, in almost one week, which is the market. Markets nowadays, you really it's a it's a shame. You want to be patient. I think yeah, I, I like to preach patience. I think the to make big money, you got to be patient for sure. But man, sometimes it feels like they can just take it from you in, in, like that. And this stock was acting so well. And if you bought it, whether you bought it here, you might have got stopped out there. But if you bought it here, you know, up seven, eight weeks in a, in a row and then all gone in two days. Uh, FLNG was something that, that I was in and, you know, it hit the, hit the 20% gain. And my spidey sense told me, you know, 20 to 28, it's going to have a pullback. And I sold like 80% of it. I literally sold 80% of it these days. One, two, three. I was out of 80%. I just couldn't bring myself to sell the last 20%. And I just knew it was going to go lower. I don't know why. I just did. And the next day it gapped down. I was like, see. And I sold it, sold it uh, the next day, the, the balance of it. But, you know, it's all gone all gone pretty much. If you pyramid, the, the, the profit is all gone. So it's just one of those markets that, that is forcing you to be, if you want to be in, to be more proactive. Uh, Devon Energy, you know, to the 50 day, the difference is, look at the couple of times, uh, 50 day, you know, blue close. This one, a little bit trickier, but back above on a couple of blue closes three or four days later, 50-day blue close, 50-day blue close, 50-day red on the low close. So looks looks a little tired, like it might need um, might need some time, and that's that's pretty much how how all of them look to me. So uh, I'm pretty negative on the market. I think we're making new leg lower. I don't know if it's because I've gotten older and just less aggressive. Or I've just been, you know, beat up on the short side in the last 12 years. Every time I thought the market go lower, you get short a little bit and the market rallies. Normally, I'd be really, really heavy short here throughout my career with this type of tape. It would be like pedal to the metal short. I am short, uh, net short a little bit, but not pedal to metal just because I just feel like it's um, it's just a lot harder uh, nowadays in Maybe that's why it's just kind of grinded lower because everyone is, uh, I, I think one of the things about it, it looks really bad. And so, it, you know, the contrarian in me says, I sometimes think, well, if it looks really bad, everybody else must see that it's really bad. And therefore, you could get some kind of counter trend rally. But I've thought that this, for bonds for a while, like it looks really bad. Is the, you should get a counter trend rally. It looks really bad. You should get a counter trend rally. Looks really bad. You should get a counter trend rally. Uh, looks really bad. You should get a counter trend rally. And you know, I've you know, there's no place to hide either. So if you're either in cash making nothing. If you're hiding in bonds, you're you're not hiding. You've lost uh, no matter where you are on the on the curve duration wise. The TLT is down 22% off its 52 week highs, and it's just relentless moves to the down so uh, downsides. There's no place to hide. It's really just cash or, or you know be out and and uh, be glad just to have your capital for the for the next leg up. So. Uh, it, it's just not a good uh, market environment. Let's see. Let's see what happens. You know, like I said, the only the only positive I can say is it, there's a lot of bad news and it looks really bad. And, and so maybe that you could get a counter trend, but that's that's just not a good reason to be long. I don't think. I just don't. It might be a reason to not be short if you don't want to be. No problem. I I understand that. Believe me, but. I just won't, I just don't see that as a good reason to be long. I want, I want to buy quality that's, you know, hard to buy stocks that are up that are holding a bid. 
that, that don't come down, you know, they go up eight days and then uh, go down one day and you're back to even that that's not a great uh, trading or investing uh, environment. Um, okay, so we did markets, we did industry groups, stocks to watch. There's, there's just so much out there. Um, let's, you know, let's go to, um, I guess we got to mention Tesla, right? To me, it's like the last bastion of hope is Tesla. It just holds up and holds up. It's building this cup with handle, I guess. 42% deep, 16% handle, not a great pattern. Uh, but, um, you know, and the quarter was really, really good. You know, even the bears I, on podcasts and Twitter are saying how good the quarter was. <laughs> and um, I tried to go up. It was up over 100 points at one point, but then the weight of the market and you're, you know, you're basically back to square one where you started. So this is the, the poster child for the bear market. And if they get Tesla, I, I think then, you know, it's probably be closer to the end if it ever were to, to break. They've gotten pretty much everything else, you know, PayPal. Uh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even realize. Look at that. M making new lows again. Shop, you know, which is just such a, a great stock, great company. And, you know, you're all the way back below the, the COVID breakout. And... You know, I just think that the best stocks did that. So if the best stocks are going to do that, the best companies, now granted they have more oomph in them, they're, they're trading higher multiples. Um, there's more of a narrative in those, which, you know, boosts them in good times and hurts them in bad times. But this is, you know, this is the COVID low right here on the NASDAQ. What is that, 86.70? Uh, if you use the top of that, you're looking at, let's just say 10,000. And um, oh, I feel like it's a magnet for um, the market. Uh, I feel like this is where the, the, the bear market will end right on top of these COVID lows somewhere in here. Uh, how it gets there is it, does it do this first and then that, or does it just waterfall? Or does it say, you know what, Scott, hold my beer. You got bearish at the lows and we're off to the races. I think any of those possibilities can happen. Um, but if, you, if, you, if you're playing the odds, I think the odds are much more skewed that, you know, something like this, something like this versus something like that. I, I, it, just, it just, to me, it looks like a magnet to that price based on what all the other uh, great stocks uh, in that COVID um, rally did. Uh, okay, so the quote of the week is pretty simple. Pretty, uh, I was listening to a podcast just this afternoon and Jim Chanos, who uh, runs a short fund. Now, he, she, he shorts individual stocks and he's long the S&P and NASDAQ sometimes. But he, in essence, he's trying to run a market neutral fund. He's almost always long the S&P and short stocks, you know, Tesla, wrong, big time, first to admit it, Carvana, uh, DoorDash, Teladoc, stuff like that, that, that he feels is overvalued. And, and um, you know, and sometimes he gets it right. And, and he's probably getting it very right now because those stocks are really getting hit hard. And uh, the S&P is holding up okay. But um, if not now, then when is a quote for these companies that don't make money. Um, if they can't make money in an environment where it's just full speed ahead and they've got a tail, um, a tailwind, whether it's, you know, commodity prices or whether it's uh, COVID for some of these like DoorDash uh, or um, Teladoc or Uber, you know, you know, if you're, if, or maybe Uber is not a great example, but like I, I used a lot of Uber during uh, COVID um, because I, I didn't have a car. <laughs> so, but DoorDash for sure. And if, and if they can't make money in that environment, then when can they? And it's something that he asks uh, his, his analysts and he thinks about on on the short side and whether you want to go short these or not it's probably too difficult but now i think it's a great thing to think about and avoid 
and avoid like Peloton. Like if they can't make money, let's go to Peloton. And, you know, it was amazing stock right here. And admittedly, I just flat out missed it. But I also missed this because it's, it's like if they can't make money in the most perfect storm where everybody and, and their mother is buying a Peloton bike, then when? When are they going to make money? And almost always the answer is sort of never, you know, at least in, in our short-term trading world. And you can see, you know, they did have some of these, you know, couple of quarters, but they've never, you know, been able to put together an annual you know, increase. And then it just collapsed in March of 21, where they lost three cents in March of 21 is here. And it might seem like it's too late, right? But that was just the beginning of, of the move down. This stock was in the 80s or 90s, and now it's 20. So if not now, when? How about Teladoc? If not during COVID, they, can they make money? Then when? I mean, when is it going to get better for a company like Teladoc? Maybe, maybe in the in the in the way out distant future, but it's a great it's a great thing to think about, like the, as something to avoid. Or if you're in and you're trading it based on the chart and the industry group and the momentum, you know, you might want to use this kind of thought process to whether you're going to keep it or sell it. You know, like if if, uh, if you know if you own Nvidia in that in that COVID um, run, you know, they're just stacking earnings on top of earnings on top of earnings. You know, that's different. Um, but Peloton, uh, Teladoc or Zoom actually had, you know, had earnings, right? So they are at least making money in, in, that, in that process. Um, Carvana, you know, it's, it's, you know, and it, 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 it's something he's, he said that he's short and it's like, if, you know, if not now, when, if they can't make money in this low interest rate environment that we've just come out of, then when, when are they going to make money? And, you know, the stock's down 80%. How about Wayfair? Is it WY or uh, W maybe is the ticker. And I just, I don't know if this is the case, but I'm just thinking out loud and here's COVID. And I guess, yeah, they, they had a couple of quarters and they made $5 in 2020, but then it just all fell apart. You know, it's just all grinded to a screeching halt and um, um, new lows. Please ignore that uh, blue dot bug. Um, that's, that shouldn't be there. So um, it's, a good, it's a good process to think about when you're evaluating the stocks you, you, you own. And I will buy stocks that don't have earnings. C Limited was one of the best trades I've ever had. Uh, I, I didn't handle it as good as I'd like, but I, you know, I did okay in it. And, you know, and so it, they didn't have earnings. And so it's it just at some point, it, 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 they're just not reporting earnings, not reporting earnings. And, it's, it's, you know, it's, if not now, when, right? If not now, when? And I don't know when for C-Limited. But now these numbers here, when the stock was here on its way up, they, they look very similar to these ones. Well, I don't see how they're, they're any different. They're losing money hand over fist with revenues up triple digits. Uh, but the, the sentiment, the, there's been a sea change, right? There's no more of a tailwind for it. So the tailwind pushes it up and now it's a headwind uh, pushing it down and you know still reporting the same type of numbers. So something to think about uh, when you're evaluating companies uh, as far as I think, at least, do I want to hold this a lot longer? If I get 20% in it, do I want to um, uh, keep keep it for more, potentially? Uh, because, you know, I, I'm a big chart guy. I, I'm a slave to the chart. I'm a slave to the price. Uh, price up good, price down bad, caveman trading. But I really, you know, I really would like to have, and, and I think about holding on, because behind every every one of these charts is a company, right? And you have a you have a piece of that company, and you know you really want to try to to hold on to that if you can, if it's if you think it can go a long way. And to me, 
we kind of got away from the C and the A in Can Slim because the Koopas of the world, this is, you know, they, there just wasn't any. And uh, Twilio, you know, there just wasn't any, mostly. And they were working and they worked great and had inst institutional sponsorship. They had everything. Uh, they just didn't have a lot of the C. Um, and some of them didn't have a lot of the A, but they had great revenue growth and things like that. But um, that, that acronym, you know, it's timeless. It, it's worked for a hundred years. And so there's a reason there's a C and an A uh, in that acronym. So, you know, you might go off the reservation with it a little bit, but just know that you're doing that, I guess, is, is, my, um, is my best advice for that. Okay, um, as far as the new features, I know I was going to talk about them this week, um, but we are going to do a video on them. So I'm going to let um, one of my teammates do it and it'll be a video dedicated to the new features. Uh, I, I know it's, um, it's been, we've had them for a couple of weeks. There, there's a couple of bugs in there. And so we're, we're trying to, you know, we, we sometimes come down to, do we release it and then see what happens? And sometimes there's a bug, but, or do we just keep it in the background and just grind it out and grind it out and test it and test it and nobody gets to use it. And so I like the, 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 the former better. I, you know, I realize it does cause some heartache for us and for you guys, for sure. And I apologize about that, but I'd rather you have it and um, see what we're working on. And, and a lot of times we have a lot of sleuths. We have a lot of, a lot of guys that are really good at power users at MarketSmith. And, you know, they find a bug for us that we, you know, just didn't notice or something. Mark said has so many moving parts that it can slip by. So, that's kind of how I think about it and how uh, management before me, Arusha kind of thought the same way and, 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 and my boss before him, we kind of felt that was the, the, the best process. So bear with us. There are, you know, there's a couple of things that, that aren't working, but they are really cool. The custom tab um, is, is really cool where you can add things and um, the relative strength line, of course, you can screen for RS and my favorite, I guess I'm going to go down the rabbit hole because I, I did, I, I, I've, I've come this far, is favorites in the open stock ideas. So the, the open stock ideas has a lot of the most commonly used reports and screens. But honestly, some of them uh, I use and some of them I don't. So now I can create my own. So I go favorites, I can have a daily favorite, I can have a weekly favorite. You see so far I haven't done the, the, the weekly and honestly, I didn't realize you could have a daily and a weekly. So this is really my weekly favorite. I'll move these over sometimes. I don't really have a daily review. Uh, I'm mostly a, a weekend routine kind of guy, uh, but I've got you know screens that I've created, best stocks in the market, high ROE screens. These are some of my favorites, just kind of playing around. I like the growth 250. I like the RS line blue dot. I like all RS line new high, the basis forming list, the William O'Neill screen. So these are, these are some of my favorite things to go through on a weekend. And now I don't have to jump all around to find them. They're right here in the favorites. So hands down, my favorite upgrade is, is this, the favorites. All right, so contact information. Uh, I did note the new email address, reach us email still works. If you have that one, no problem. A lot of you do, but it, it will go away eventually. So get used to this new email, marketsmith at investors.com. And the phone number is the same, 800-831-2525. No take on the market next week because we'll do the stay in step, our monthly webinar on Thursday of next week. Uh, Harold and I will, will uh, go through uh, the recap for the month. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye.